This morning we conclude this 10-part series on sanctification with the question, are you willing to learn to walk in the new way of the Spirit? You know God requires it. Romans 6, 4, Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into his death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the new way of life. End quote. We were, we were born again and received the new nature, the new Christ-like nature. So here's the real question. Are we willing to die to our old nature? When Christ says no, will we agree with God to, uh, or go by the uh, way of the remaining fragments of our old nature's thinking that still remains in the crevasses of our minds? We can extrapolate from 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 42 through 44, some of the dynamic differences between the old flesh and the transformation that takes place while we still remain in this morty, mortal earth ensemble. As, as uh, one having passed from the spirit of death to being made spiritually alive, Paul, Paul writes, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. We were sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. We were sown in dishonor, but raised in glory sown in weakness, but raised in the power of his Holy Spirit. Did you notice that this body of flesh is not only corrupt, but weak, degraded? And when compared, especially when compared to the original creation of prelapsarian Adam before the fall, our fleshly bodies are raised in the corruption of our fleshly nature. Without his spirit of san or sanctification, we, we cannot learn to walk in the new way of the spirit. What if, what if God were to allow um, the people with their old and unsanctified nature into his eternal kingdom? Some peddlers of their own pomposity teach that God is only love and therefore will not deny heaven to anyone. What if everyone made it into heaven even without a change of nature, sanctification, or restoration? Wouldn't heaven be just like hell on earth? We read in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. In the sanctified fellowship of the church, we are told we, we should adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. And in Philippians 2.5, we can only do that through the power of his sanctifying spirit who lives in us. And therefore, we have the mind of Christ. There is a promise in 1 John 3, 2 through 3, that we ought not to pass over. That there, there's a coming a, a day, dear friends, we are God's children now, but what we will be have not, has not yet been revealed. We will know him when he appears, but we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies themselves just as he is pure. And if God is working to this end, is it any wonder that he calls upon us to cooperate with him in our restoration? Follow me, Jesus says. Paul says, imitate me. We don't know in any specific details of how much greater our spiritual bodies will be when we are fully transformed. But, but what we do know is that we will be like Christ and surrounded by sanctified people. However, in this body, we are learning to think and act like Jesus through the Spirit's sanctification. Aren't you looking forward to the day when we are unencumbered by time, space, and these decaying physical bodies? If that's so, Paul says that we should examine ourselves as to whether or not we are in the faith and test ourselves so that we know for sure that Jesus Christ is in us and his spirit is in the process of renewing our minds, recreating in us the image of Christ. That was paraphrased from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 13, 5. You may be asking, how can we be sure that we are in the spirit and adopted into the family of our creator? Hebrews 12, 5 says, it, it, it provides the answer. It says in, in Hebrews 12, 5, the 
exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you're enduring chastening, God is dealing with you as his child. For what son is there whom the father does not chasten? But but if you are without chastening, uh, of which all become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not true sons. I trust this 10-part series on sanctification has helped you to look more closely at the essential need of our becoming Christ-like in every aspect of our life.